Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Troy Explains Your Math Homework, a video series without a theme song where I do your math homework so you don't have to. Okay, so the first question is question number eight from assignment two. Find all of the zeros of the function, enter your answers as a comma separated list. Gotta pause right at the beginning, my dog needs to be let out. I informed my dog that that was bad timing and she didn't apologize because she is a dog. All right, find all of the zeros of the function. Now, if you have been working on this problem, you might have started it when you were really doing a lot of the rational roots theorem. Um, another way to think about it, instead of just trying to plug in zeros, or if we're being honest, maybe you were going to Desmos and graphing this, Another way to, uh, to approach this is to think of this as a difference of squares or think of it as quadratic type, either way. So 625 is 25 squared. y to the fourth is y squared squared. And 16 is 4 squared. So this will factor to 25y squared plus 4 times 25y squared minus 4. Okay, now if you're asked to find all of the zeros from those factors, 25y squared plus 4 equals 0 would give you y squared equals negative 4 25ths or y equals plus or minus 2 fifths i. Same sort of deal over here, 25y squared minus 4 equals 0 would give me y squared equals 4 25ths or y equals plus or minus 2 fifths. Now this approach has one slight drawback and that's the second part of the problem asks you to write out the complete linear factorization. Now uh, one thing for starters, notice that this uh, entire problem is in y, not in uh, x. So I'm seeing a lot of people writing out y plus 2 fifths i times y minus 2 fifths i times y plus 2 fifths times y minus 2 fifths. Now the problem with this is that my lead coefficient is 625, and that is not what my lead coefficient would be here. So maybe a better approach to this would be to have continued factoring these. Factor them instead as 5y plus 2 and 5y minus 2. Perhaps it'd make a little bit more sense to put those over here. So if I were to factor this again as a difference of squares, I'd get 5y plus 2, 5y minus 2. And the same thing here, I'd get 5y plus 2i and 5y minus 2i. So this is the actual answer we're looking for. Um, this is equivalent to the right answer, multiplying by 625 in front, but I'm not sure if WebAssign will take that. I haven't tried it. Next up, problem number 16. So I see um, four terms, and before I even can read the question, I just start factoring by grouping. Maybe that's not the best strategy, maybe I'm doing some reckless math, but you know. So when I factor, I'm gonna get 2x minus nine. And here, 
can factor out a plus 9, and I'm going to get a 2x minus 9. So x squared plus 9 times 2x minus 9. That's more of a factorization, so I might as well move that down here. The zeros would be plus or minus 3i and x equals 9 halves. Now, as a product of linear factors, I would have to turn that into x plus 3i times x minus 3i. Remember, you're thinking about this as a difference of squares. It's just since it's positive 9, you know, a sum of squares, then you need to involve the i. Now, use your uh, factorization to determine, with an e, the x-intercepts of the function. So that just means the real zeros. Oh, I didn't finish the problem above, sorry. I'm sure you were all screaming at the screen. So the x-intercepts are just the real zeros, so this is just 9 halves. Um, I think you only need to enter an x-coordinate, not both. Moving on. All right, I've got three terms, but it's a fourth power. This is problem 19, by the way. So I'm thinking quadratic type. I'm thinking x squared times x squared, and then what multiplies to 27, negative 27, and adds to 6, x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 3. So right the polynomial is a product of factors that are irreducible over the rationals. This means, uh, are there any uh, factors that have rational zeros? And if so, make sure they're reduced all the way. There aren't, so I'm just going to leave my answer the way that it was. x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 3. There's no way to get a rational zero out of that. Now, linear and quadratic factors that are irreducible over the reals. This means what have real zeros? Well, this is going to have a real zero. Well, two of them, really. So I'm going to break that up. The x squared plus 9 is going to stay the same. But this is going to become x plus root 3 times x minus root 3. And then finally, just like in the last problem, as x plus 3i times x minus 3i times x plus root 3 times x minus root 3. And our final question is uh, number 24. So fourth degree polynomial that has these zeros and also fulfills this solution point. Because I have real coefficients, that means my uh, complex conjugates theorem is in play. So my fourth real zero is uh, negative i. So I've got x minus 1 times, oh sorry, x plus 1, oh boy, times x minus 3 times x plus i times x minus i. And I'm going to, I don't know, set that equal to f of x. OK, so um, theoretically speaking, I'm not sure if um, WebAssign requires you to multiply this out. So let's try not multiplying it out. But we need to plug in. 1 and see what we get. So if we plug in 1, we get 2 times negative 2 times 1 plus i times 1 minus i. Okay, 1 plus i times 1 minus i, it's been a while since we've done this, is going to be 1 minus i squared, which is 2. So we're going to get 
2 times negative 2 times 2. And that makes negative 8. So that's not what I want. So I have to multiply by negative 2 out front. And that's going to be my final answer. That keeps my zeros the same, because if you multiply zero by something, it stays the same. But it's going to change all of the other points on my graph. It's going to reflect my graph. So instead of being um, at uh, negative 8, it's going to be at uh, positive 8. And then it's going to multiply by 2. So instead of being at positive 8, it's going to be at positive 16. All right, folks, hope that was helpful.